Hey, Redcon Trader here, and welcome back to Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. As today, we set our sights on taking our first steps out of the Furabundus sector. Though, of course, we still have a fair bit of uh, setup and dialogue to take care of, so let's jump right into it. I want to make sure we're at least outside of Furabundus at the end of this episode. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Lord Captain, the inspection of the ship's systems is complete. The tech priests are reporting that the machine spirits are calm and satisfied. Everything is ready for onward travel. Except there is an issue you must be made aware of. Cassia makes a quick, nervous gesture, adjusting the adornment over her third eye. I have been studying the records left by the vessel's previous navigator. I wanted to double-check the route to Dargonis and discovered that it does not match the one recorded in the Atlas. It is more than a minor warp fluctuation. The route has been wiped out. It can no longer be used for traveling. To make matters worse, I started checking the paths from the Atlas, one after the other, and saw the same thing everywhere. The warp is roiling with an ominous storm, bursting with vivid and screaming colors. It will not hinder our movement, but but all previous knowledge is now utterly useless. Ardenta angrily chops the air with the side of her palm. Warp storms are our enemies, just like heretics and demons. It is a shame they can't be dispersed with a flamer or a bolter. Yeah, yeah, it turns out you can't just shoot all your problems in life. Who'd have thought? Now we can be certain that problems with astropathic communications in the Coronas Expanse are no mere coincidence. There is a warp disturbance in our way, Lord Captain. It is swallowing messages and disrupting familiar routes. This means you need to locate the key worlds of the Von Valancius Protectorate as soon as possible. I am talking about Janus, Dargonis, and Kiava Gamma. Charting new routes so they can be reached and restoring control will be the necessary next step. And what happens if we can't actually do that? If we can't re-establish communications? A world deprived of connection to its neighboring systems and the Coronas Expanse's infrastructure can only rely on itself. And their capabilities are often limited. For example, Janus does not have a fleet of its own. Pirates, cultists, heretics, xenos, anyone could prey on the helpless planet. The loss of communication is a threat to your position. A rogue traitor with no protectorate to back them is one that grows weaker by the day. The Voxmaster is entirely correct. You are rogue traitor Valen von Valancius, the successor to Theodora von Valancius, one of the most influential women this side of the Maw. But you are also new to the business of governing. Many will doubt your competence and try to carve up your protectorate so they can snatch a piece for themselves. It is important to show your potential allies and foes that you are in control of the situation. Which is why the sooner we reclaim these lost worlds, the better. Understood. So, let's get me up to speed. Tell me about Janus. The surface of Janus is altered extensively, so the planet could be designated an agri-world. It is a powerful food base, capable of supplying the burgeoning protectorate and exporting provisions to the outer worlds at the same time. Janus owes much of its prosperity to the Governor House of Viat. Under its leadership, the world has grown ever more prosperous year after year, securing shipments and taxes while keeping the workforce tightly controlled. Gotcha. And Kiava Gamma, that's our forge world, right? The industrial world of Kiava Gamma is being managed by the Governor House of Gaprak and supplies your protectorate with rare mineral resources. Additionally, the planet features an Adeptus Mechanicus Manufactorum that processes materials and prepares them for shipment. 
I testify that Kiaba Gamma is a world marked by the Omnissiah's patronage. By his grace, the manufacturums of the colony are inhabited by committed and industrious machine spirits. Heinrich coughs quietly. Mistress Toleman neglected to mention that Kiaba Gamma Manufacturum also supplies heavy machinery, from forage harvesters to vessel systems and components. Abelard turns his hard eyes on Heinrich. You display commendable knowledge of our world's manufacturing capability, Van Kalox. Pleased to be of service. All right, easy, you two. We've already got enough problems. Let's not start manufacturing drama. What about Dargonis? Dargonis is the heart and soul of your protectorate. It is where the main administrative resources and storage facilities are, and so is the Von Valencius Palace. If you would like to know, this is where you will publicly accept the title of Rogue Trader. Dargonis is a major administrative hub that runs the cargo fleet and keeps track of finances. I see. All three of them sound pretty important. Abby, thoughts? You've been doing this for a while. Where would you set your priorities? Abelard strokes his beard for a few seconds before giving a hesitant reply. Rediscovering the agro world will supply your protectorate with something none of your servants can do without. Sustenance. The importance of basic supplies should not be underestimated. Just look at footfall in its current pitiful state. On the other hand, I am concerned by the rumors concerning Kiaba Gamma. There have been no problems on Janus for many years, but something is very wrong with the industrial world right now. Delay may cost us the entire planet. I trust I do not have to explain the capital world? Losing it would make us the laughingstock of the other dynasties. Besides, the loss of chronicles and ledgers would spell a bureaucratic catastrophe. So all three systems are equally vital to the Protectorate. It falls to you to decide which should be brought into the fold before the rest, Lord Captain. <laughs> well, gosh, Abby. Thanks, that really helps narrow it down. All right, sounds like we've got our work cut out for us. Any more business, or should we get right to it? That is all, Lord Captain. The vessel and crew await your instructions, and are ready to depart footfall immediately, should you so desire. Okie dokie. Well, that wasn't too bad. That was like eight minutes. Though, of course, we do have several characters around the bridge who are also queued up to talk to us. By my count, we've got like ten discussions we still need to get through. Though, obviously, we're not going to do it all at once. Some things are definitely more important than others. So what I'm thinking is we'll do one between each sector. And we'll start with the one that is most immediately relevant to what we were just discussing. We'll chat up Heinrichs about his new mission. Since it does seem to be directly tied to whatever's happening on Kiava Gamma. Heinrichs looks at you intently, his head tilted. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, let's be very careful about which options we actually choose. Van Kalox, you said you wanted to discuss your new mission. Yes, but not here. I wouldn't want our conversation to be gossip fodder on the bridge and in the officer's mess. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, not voiced. Come on. All right. Heinrich nods slightly. Thank you for finding an opportunity to talk. I trust now would be a good time to explain the reason for my return aboard your ship. Just to be clear, Van Kalox, you wouldn't be here if I had the actual authority to reject your request. 
I do often encounter such reactions. As long as the Lord Captain and his subjects do not interfere with my work, or attract my professional interest, I will not interfere in the rogue trader's affairs, or distract you with my presence more than is strictly necessary. To business, then. The Cult of the Final Dawn. The madmen preach their heretical doctrine among the denizens of the Coronis Expanse, and instigate crimes against the throne of humanity. One such crime took place in your protectorate. The Lord Inquisitor considered it necessary to have one of his acolytes accompany the rogue trader on the voyage into the corrupted region. I also need to meet with one of my observers on the capital world of your domain. Wait, this doesn't add up. Aren't you from the Ordo Xenos? Why would you be investigating a chaos cult? You are well versed in how the Inquisition is organized, Valen. Yes, initially our arrival in the Coronis Expanse was dictated by the need to fight Xenos. But there is more. The cult is tangentially related to my main specialization. Perhaps I will be able to reveal the full truth someday. But right now, I ask you to display humility and patience. Yeah, I'm not sure I can promise that. Did you just say you've got spies on my worlds? The person I mentioned is not a spy, but a secretary in the Administratum Department on Dargonis. The planet's governor and Theodora were fully aware of his status. His duty is to fulfill the sacred oath to the Golden Throne and eliminate threats to the Imperium which the Coronis Expanse has in abundance. His name is Achilles Scalander. As soon as we contact Argonis, I will introduce you as the new head of the dynasty. I am sure you will appreciate the presence of such an advisor amongst your subjects, and I suggest you heed his words, at least occasionally. I'll certainly take that under advisement. As for the rest of it, I certainly hope you're not insinuating that my dynasty has been tainted with chaos. Chaos treads softly, Valen. The main danger of secret cults and sects is that they are like seeds. They can remain in the ground for decades, safe from all scrutiny, until an opportunity to sprout, grow, and bear monstrous fruit presents itself. The emergence of a cult on one of the rogue trader's planets does not mean the dynasty head himself is a chaos worshipper. Having said that, it should be noted that Theodora von Valancius was famous for her loose interpretation of the freedoms granted by the Warrant. Heinrichs looks at you closely. It is known that corruption runs in the blood. Your propensity for heretical deeds is yet to be determined. Perhaps by the Lord Inquisitor himself. Yeah, funny you should mention that guy. You know, that letter he sent me actually does give me permission to take a fairly wide latitude when it comes to interpreting the freedoms of my warrant of trade. That's not going to be a problem with you, is it? Heinrichs shakes his head. Of course not. I should show greater tolerance for the mistakes of a newly appointed rogue trader. To be frank, I am surprised... The Lord Inquisitor is not the type to indulge the weakness of soul and mind, even in somebody who only recently accepted the burden of a lofty title. You sure about that? Because I am fairly certain he made the same allowance for Theodora as well. All right, Van Kalox. Now tell me about this cult that's trying to infiltrate my protectorate. Chaos worshippers. Most often, agents of the throne run into lone renegades stirring up the rabble. Insane prophets and hysteric visionaries preaching the end of days. A passing comment, a mutant rebellion, an onslaught of monsters. Each time, they come up with a new reason why people should prostrate themselves and quiver in fear. Much effort in the blood of those loyal to the Golden Throne were spent before we established the connection between these heretics. However, the cult of the final dawn is something greater than a gaggle of misguided seers and fortune-tellers. They cleverly spread their agents all over the Cronus Expanse, 
disseminating heresy among honest people on the Imperial worlds. There is a certain strategy to their actions that changes whenever we get too close. And finally, they have enough military power to have had the two ships that we had sent after them, later discovered as wreckage. The growing difficulty in making warp jumps is detrimental to us, but is unlikely to inconvenience those who engage in vile sorcery day in, day out. Heinrichs sighs. After the events on Rakhad Minor, as sign suspected the cult might have built its nest inside Winterscale's domain. But the latest reports indicate it is your protectorate that is harboring heretics. Being in your entourage improves my chances of getting closer to their secrets. Guess I can understand that. But I've already given you permission to tag along, Van Kalox. What more do you want from me? The rogue trader should deliver me to the system that contains the industrial world of Kiava Gamma. I will then accompany you to the surface and determine what the cult is planning, and how it intends to use the resources that have fallen into their clutches. Which may very well include the blessed engines of the Adeptus Mechanicus, and even the followers of the Omnissiah themselves. I will be frank. The answer to this question is unlikely to please either of us. The machinations of chaos usually go beyond solely inflicting countless deaths and destruction. Having their plans come to fruition would lead to far more terrible consequences. One of the systems in the Coronis Expanse is already lost. May the Emperor protect us from watching this tragedy play out again. Tell me this, Van Kalox. What if it turns out that Kiava Gamma has fallen to chaos? Would you have me destroy one of my own worlds, kill all those people? Just to further your own goals? Heinrich stares you down. On Reichhead Minoris, you made a decision that sent billions of souls into the grasp of the archenemy. An unreasonable and unforgettably high price for a small handful of people saved by your mercy. Do I consider it a worthy exchange? I most certainly do not. Will I make every effort to make sure such an exchange does not happen again? Of course I will. Sentimentality is a luxury I cannot afford. You sure about that? Near as I can tell, you had the authority to countermand my orders. If you'd wanted that planet destroyed, you could have seen it happen. Theodora's body was barely cold. I haven't been sworn in yet. At least half my retinue would have backed you if you'd made a move. And yet, you didn't. The interrogator's eyes narrow. I haven't said I would not like to be able to afford such luxury. In fact, deep down, I understand why you acted that way. I have yet to eliminate the understanding and acceptance within myself. But I will. Oh, good. Yes, well, that certainly sounds like a healthy life goal. Nothing quite like uh, becoming an inhumane monster in pursuit of preserving humanity. So if I might ask, what exactly drew your attention to Kiava Gamma in the first place? Just word from your spies, or was it something else? disjointed pieces of data that finally merged into a single picture. Additionally, not long ago, a vessel from that world arrived on footfall. The reports from the crew were confused and alarming, making me fear a planet-wide rebellion. Oh, okay, so you heard from exactly the same people I did. Gotta say, I was really expecting a bit more than that, but okay. What about Aurora? You think we'll run into more like them? I have no doubt it will happen sooner or later, Valen. Chaos Marine siding with a cult is... very, very bad news. Most likely they kept away until recently, pulling their puppet strings from a respectable distance. These traitors seldom show up alone. The best we can count on is having to deal with just a squad of Chaos Space Marines in the Coronis Expanse, and not an entire company.
if it's any reassurance. I have no intention of letting anyone poach planets in my protectorate. Not cultists, not Xenos, not rival rogue traders. Or anyone else who might try to take what's mine. A commendable aspiration for a person who holds the fates of billions of people and dozens of imperial worlds in his hands. Which is why you need to be ever more vigilant when looking for seeds of corruption on your planets. Lest they sprout someday and spell doom for whatever is tangled up in their roots. Yeah, I think we have an understanding on that. But enough about chaos. Where do the Dark Eldar fit into this? We had almost rescued Rykad Minoris. The planet never would have fallen if not for their untimely intervention. Heinrich winces. The Drukhari. One of the branches of the Eldari, an ancient and vicious Xenos race. Those creatures are a living terror to ordinary people who fall prey to their raids, for the simple reason that the victims are not killed outright, but instead become their playthings. Just as you and I need air to survive, the Drukhari require psychic energy born from torment and pain, which they extract from their captives with uncanny expertise. Their ships, which are difficult to mistake for any other, arrive suddenly and undetected. Their stealth technologies greatly surpass the capabilities of standard Imperium Augur arrays. The objective of their raids is never to capture a world or a ship. No, they are only interested in fresh victims. After filling their holds with living captives, they disappear into the webway, a different dimension which conceals their greatest stronghold, Kamarag the dark city of the Drukhari, from which none can hope to escape. Heinrich studies your expression. I do not know why the Drukhari stole Rykad's son and brought about the fulfillment of the cult's prophecies. Perhaps the Xenos themselves have played into the archenemy's designs, or perhaps Aurora's divinations in fact described the Drukhari's actions. There is only one thing I can say with absolute certainty. There is no alliance between the Cult of the Final Dawn and the Xenos. It is simply impossible. I don't know, Van Kalox. The timing seems suspect for them not to be working together. But I guess I'll defer to your expertise for now. Is there anything else? I've got a lot to do, and I really should get back to doing it. Let me put it this way. You may think whatever you want of me, but my goal is not to hinder you. I am here to help you in the fight against foes you may not even be aware of. You have my word that I will provide every assistance in uprooting the heresy that has sprouted on the Von Valancius worlds while their master was away, and that I will... Try to be more patient with the less grievous flaws the bearers of the warrants are sometimes known to have. Heinrichs inclines his head. Thank you for sparing me the time, Lord Captain. Interesting. A bit wordier than I would have liked, but still, lots of important story beats there. More context for the events surrounding us, more insight into... Heinrichs as a character, not to mention some clues for things to come, speculation fodder, and of course two, two new subquests, taking Heinrichs to Dargonis and Kiabagama. Yeah, yeah, not bad. That was fairly productive. Be right back. And we're back. As you can see, I uh, went ahead and did our trading off screen. And I primarily bumped us up with Explorator and Caspalika. Though I did also round us up to four with Fellowship, because seriously, we were like 50 points away. But um, unfortunately, I could not justify the 5,000 point buy-in on Drusians just yet. I would love to grab that Heavy Bolter. I'm just not sure that's going to happen before we phase Argenta out of our active party. But let's have a quick look at what we did get. From the Explorators, we got the Surgeon's Manual. 
That's a nice modest bump to Medicaid. A Ratobi Pattern Plasma Pistol, which is a pretty big step up from a standard plasma. And a C Delphine Pattern Omniscient Axe, which we will definitely get some use out of because that is a huge step up from our default starter axe. Sadly, though, that is definitely the highlights of our new acquisitions because, unfortunately, um, due to Vladame's ridiculous prices, we just did not qualify for much. We got two stacks of some interesting grenades. And we got some bladed boots, which basically just adds a bleeding component to charging and slashing. So we'll toss those to Heinrich since he has both. And then for our new rank from the Fellowship, we gain yet another stack of colorful new grenades. And pirate chainmail, which actually isn't bad, but unfortunately is a slight step down from the gear we already have on our one dedicated medium armor character. So yeah, sadly not a lot of note this time out, with the one glaring exception being that stuff we pulled for Pascal. Because yes, that is a huge jump in melee damage potential. And then of course the Surgeon's Manual as well, though. That's a relatively meager plus eight boost. Oh, and uh, on a similar note, I should also highlight that uh, I did shuffle some other gear and work that Chartist pendant into our rotation, which did significantly boost uh, Cassia's coercion and commerce. As for Imperial lore, it did, it did give her a pretty huge bump, but Valen does still have a slight lead on her. But that lead will grow over time, given that we have finite skill advances to work with. I will say, I did um, I did briefly consider switching him off to Xeno Slore instead, but but I actually have a different character in mind for that. I just, you know, we we have just yet to actually meet them. Speaking of which, our immediate business is done. All quests in Furabundus have been dealt with, at least the ones we could actually finish. Let's get this show on the road. Lord Captain, we are once more within reach of the Von Valencia's Protectorate. Of utmost urgency is restoring communication with your planets and bestowing the wisdom of your decrees upon their stewards. Developing colonies, claiming new territories, and establishing trade links. All this is now your privilege and burden. Neat. Thanks, Danrock. No pressure, right? I do appreciate the mobile extractiums, though. Those things are actually really hard to come by post-launch. Let's get out to the main map. And there's our tutorial. Though, of course, I'm already familiar with most of this stuff from earlier iterations of the game. But for those who want to read it, there you go. Honestly, though, it's pretty straightforward. We just have to chart new routes. And there we go. Numerous new sectors for us to explore. Though, of course, uh, as that tutorial pop-up highlights, some sectors do not have immediate paths to them, so we won't worry about those just yet. We'll have to stockpile navigation points before we start going off the beaten paths. However, I would very much like some action to help offset all that recent chit-chat. And given that I think our first priority needs to be finding our way to Janus, which should be up here somewhere, I think right near the Space Whale. It's been a while, but I do vaguely recall that being its general location. Um, I think we're going to set our sights on Trinitos, which also just happens to be our most dangerous path. We could use our one navigation point to make the trek safer, but, um, but no, I think we'll tempt fate. And here we go. Another watch aboard the void ship has come to an end. The Lord Captain, having given his final orders for the day, retired to his chambers for some divine rest. 
However, the rogue trader's slumber was disturbed by horrific nightmares plaguing his mind. Fate wrenched the Lord Captain out of the clutches of those agonizing warp dreams, only for him to witness the nightmares seeping through the flimsy membrane of the Geller field and taking physical shape in the ship's Sanctum Sanctorum. To battle! Oh man, I actually recognize this one. This is not a great one for a, a backline glass cannon. But, um, you know what? Beggars can't be choosers. Let's, uh, let's get in there. Hope for the best. I always have a backup plan. Oh, yeah, this... This is exactly the one I thought it was. I don't know if it's changed much since launch, but... We have essentially been ambushed by a horde of rabble backed up by a couple of, um, daemonettes, I think. I'm only seeing rabble, so maybe it's not as bad as it was back in Alpha. All right, well let's let's trim this first guy, then we'll get a better idea of what we're up against. Your arrogance will be your downfall. Cease and repent. Oh goodness, yes, we are way outnumbered. 18 enemies. Um, we're going to have to play this one defensively until our reinforcements arrive. And we do have Daemonettes, as well as Possessed Technomats. One right there. And there. So three Daemonettes total. Those are highly mobile melee fighters. So our best bet is to hem ourselves into a corner, perhaps. Right, so obviously everyone's beelining for us, but we we have the singular advantage of a choke point. Plus this conveniently placed bed we can use as cover. We have no line of sight from here, so we'll just set up. And we'll lay down gas. That way the enemies have to hurt themselves just to get to us. I'll make it happen. Oh, and uh, surefire plan for the dodge boost, just in case. Okay, here we go. Don't touch me. I'll do what it Emperor, takes. Emperor, protect me. Accept it. Embrace it. <laughs> I can handle this. This way. No. <laughs> I can handle this. What? Quick, quick. Oh, yes. And we've got Abby. That is the best possible character they could have given us first. We've got to get him stuck in as quick as possible. We'll knock out this cluster, then leapfrog to the next. Oh, shoot. Okay. I... I was really hoping that would drop more. Right, I have to adjust my thinking. To unfair difficulty. Shoot. Oh man, I really wanted to get him over there. Alright, fine. That's that's fine. We'll adapt. We'll at least get him on this first Daemonette. And then with any luck, we'll also pull these guys. Okay, not terrible. Let's hope that's close enough. Yeah. 
Nice, nice. Soak the first hit. Okay, okay, that actually went pretty well. Oh, yes, and Valen now has line of sight on Daemonet 2. Ooh, I'm not sure we can actually take it out this early in the fight, but... At the very least, this will slow it. Buy us slightly more time. You know what? We might actually want to use Expose for once. Let's see here. Oh, goodness, yes. If ever there was a time to mitigate the fence, this would be the time to do it. And the moment of truth. Consider this a taste of what's to come. Okay, okay, not bad. And that will do it. Fantastic. Damonette 2, out. Emperor, protect me. Damonette 3, headed for Valen. Not ideal. Oh, yes, and Adira's in. Mm. Let's thin him out. Though, buffs first. Oh, crap, okay. Right, right, because she came into the fight late, she doesn't get to set all three zones. That is good to know. Um... All right, well, we still need to finish setting buffs. Abby is our bulwark. He cannot fall. Okay. You know what? That's fine. That actually works out just fine. That could have been way worse. But we do need to be very careful. Um... Yeah, 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 we have to risk one more. We'll trim their left side. Spillover should kill the guy on our flank. Yes. Five out. And, and Veiled Degradation in the red. We have to be very frugal with powers from here on out, at least until Cass hits the field. Abby's back up. Let's... See if we can push this thing back. Though odds are not in our favor. Nope. No luck. Just hold. Tempts ate it again. Nice. And Valen. Oh my goodness, we might actually pull this off. Hmm. Not sure the bed cover works from this angle. I'll risk it. Let's burn this thing down. Just need to make sure we ration out our action points properly. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, that'll have to do. And surefire death whisper. Oh, that was not great, but but at least we got hemorrhage in there. Hang in there, Val. I'll do what it takes. Oh. <laughs> My lungs. Uh, Argenta. Okay, sure. Why not? Ooh, but Adira goes first. Yes, let's clear the rest of that cluster. Oh, but we have to be very careful with degradation. No frivolous casting. Just stay focused on primary needs. Toughness for Abby. So far, so good. Zone's fine. We'll skip the heal. Ride the lightning. Turn a fit. Nice. Uh, ooh. <laughs> that is a lot more stressful on unfair difficulty. Okay, yeah, let's uh let's go for an expose. And Argenta. Oh, right, wait, wait, we can just go for an auto-stun. That is exactly why I took Martial Artist. I mean, it's not technically an auto-stun, it's an auto-hit with a strength save to avoid. Which it did not. Argenta. All right, let's uh, keep pushing you up. We'll see if we can trim one of those two holdouts back there. the guy in middle. Oh, just barely. But got it done. Very nice. I mean, at this point, we've obviously won the fight, so it's really just seeing if we can manage it without anyone dropping. Um... You know what? We'll just push Abby up. Follow my lead. Ah, close. No point in swinging, not with a 9%. And Val is way out of range for distract, so... Just hold. Hope for the best. Damon at one. Back up. And Damon at three. You know, I'm kind of glad it played out this way because uh, I have been waiting for a chance to validate my, my choice of backup weapon. So, you know, fingers crossed this actually works. Otherwise, I am going to feel very silly and also impaled. <laughs> oh, yes. Really would have been better with some knockback, but you know what? I will I will 1 million percent take that. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Don't come for the buck unless you're ready to get shot. And we're good. A single lonely Daemonette remains. I have read tomes of military tactics. Cast still got her half turn. Interesting. Also noted for the future. And I think we're officially done tempting fate, so we'll just have a Dira debuff, but not attack. We'll do. Oh, and momentum. Yeah, we're done. Nah, she won't be alive long enough for damage to matter. Let's finish this. Ask my man. With the new random acts of violence. Glad we actually got to try that thing out. Man, this uh, this actually went really well for us. Not gonna lie, I was actually really legitimately worried about this one because aside from just being a glass cannon, um, Val is really reliant on having multiple sources of exploit stacking on every enemy every round. You know, that's that's kind of the one big strength of the multi-operative crew. And obviously starting out solo on the battlefield deprived us of that. But it still worked out. Which nets us some XP and maybe about 200, 300 RP go. worth of cargo. Not too shabby. Not to mention, of course, it also gave us some much needed action after uh, after a fairly dense chunk of story set up. Ideally, I would like to get at least one fight or ship battle per episode. It's just, you know, not always possible. Oh, wow, is that... Holy moly, that is the sector with Janus in it. That is way closer than I thought it was. Huh. Okay. Well, gosh, that means we're going to hit Janus in like two, maybe three episodes. Yeah, because we still have to clear out Trinidos. All right. Well, I'm going to have to rethink something. So um, this is as good a place as any to call it. We'll hit the pause button for now. I'll take care of the usual off-screen bookkeeping and... Uh, we will pick up here next time. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Revenant, Aloise, Croaking LOR, Dragon Matrix 7, Dranketh, Eerie V23, Egon Alter, Excelsior, Goatly, James Tremay, Kazor, Mark GMs, and Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Piankowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. I can handle this. This way! Oh, no.